Praise the Lord. Father, we appreciate, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for you are God, you are worthy to be praised. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You reign it, let the earth tremble. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for what you continue to do in our lives, in our families, in our world, in our nation, and everywhere we find ourselves. We thank you for it is for your love that we have not been consumed. And so we pray you, Lord God Almighty, that even as we break your word this morning, that by your spirit you will guide us, you will lead us, you will enliven and refresh us, Lord, in your word. For the entrance of your word bringeth good news. Pour unto us your word, Lord, and revive us again. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. See, beloved God has been so, so awesome. And it's been the reason for all that we do. Let's quickly open our Bible to James chapter 2 and verse 17. James chapter 2 and verse 17. If you are with me, shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. James 2. And verse 17, that scripture reads from the New International Version. It says, in the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Now, our discussion today is translating the promises of God, translating the promises of God. And in trying to look at this uh, discussion and in looking at this scriptural reading that we have read from James chapter 2 and verse 7, in the same way faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. In other Bible translation, it says faith without work is dead. Now, have you ever thought about how life would have been if we can only inhale and not exhale? Hallelujah. So just imagine how long would we have lived? Praise God. How much would we have stayed healthy if we can only inhale and not exhale? Praise God. Now that is uh, the most apt way to look at this translating God's promises, translating God's promises. See, everything that God allows our way has a purpose. It has a goal. It means, therefore, that the word of God that we listen to, the, 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 the message and the promises that God brings our way in diverse forms, in the music that beautiful, melodious gospel song that you just listened to, in that track that you just read, in that banner you just saw. Every single promise is not useful until we start acting on them and tending them into real action. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the love of God cannot fail because God's word cannot return to his void. It cannot return to his void except it accomplishes the purpose for which it was sent out. But you see, beloved, God's word is dependent on how you act on it. So his promises, his, his word for us, are yea and amen. So be it. Those are his words for us. But you see, Many of us children of God go limping all our days because we do not understand that there must be a translation into action, a translation into purpose, all that God has revealed in our life. Praise God. So, beloved, we need to understand that Fruitfulness, therefore, is a representation of what we make of God's word. It means, therefore, that the conditions that children of God that we find ourselves 
is a representation of what we have known, how we have used it, and how that knowledge is now profiting us. The other day we talked about knowledge and we gave the, 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 the scenario of the man that wants to cross the road with the information of look to the left, look to the right, and then look to the left again before you cross. And we said if he doesn't understand the purpose of that information, that the purpose of the left, right, and left is not just to finish that goal and cross, but to use that as a way of assessing if the road is free enough on both sides for him to be able to cross. Hallelujah. Uh, it, it, so it, it, it therefore means that it is not enough to know what God has said about me. It's not enough to understand the promises of Christ my Savior. It is actually key for me to understand that those promises, every word of God, as power inherent of itself and that it is how I forge and make of this to become value in my life that makes all the difference. Job made this clear when he said clearly in Job 32 and verse 8 that there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him all understanding. It is little wonder that scripture said again, he said this book of the law will not depart from your mouth. He said you should study it day and night, understand what is inherent in it. He said and study it to do. He said that way you will make your way prosperous and you would have a good success. It's a promise of God. And he told us again, he said, and thou shalt remember the glory of God, for it is he that giveth the power to make wealth. Wealth in the name of God is not about material acquisition. Hallelujah. Because wisdom is the principal thing. So beloved, you see, the things that God has said about us, that we are the head and not the tail, every of God promise that we can live above sin, that we can walk in the understanding of God and be the light unto the world, the salt unto the world, are true for as much as we understand that every walk, every word of God we must translate into action. So how do we become sort of the world? How do we refresh our world? How do we change our world? How do we make it a place where Christ reigns? We can do that if that God at Christ, he does not dwell in us. And that is why this morning we are inviting you to make Jesus the personal Lord and Savior of your life by calling the numbers on the screen. And somebody will be there to pray with you, to cancel, support you on this journey so that with Jesus at the center of your life, he can give your life a meaning and change all concerning you. God loves you and so do we and he will keep you and establish you now and always in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.